G'day all, welcome to another toot. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the stack and the heap and the new and delete operators. Really, really important stuff in C++ and these are all to do with memory management. Okay, so when our application runs, Windows gives us uh, portions of RAM or memory to use for our program's variables. And it also gives us a portion of memory that uh, our code is sitting in, so the, the actual instructions themselves. And the CPU is actually creeping along one instruction after the other and executing the instructions, hopefully doing something useful with the variables. Okay, so when we call the function, the CPU has actually got to stop executing instructions one after the other, and it's got to jump to the function's code. And it then executes the function's code one line after another. And once it's finished doing the function, it's got to return back to where it was before it called the function. And in order to know where the CPU was up to prior to calling the function, the address has to be saved somewhere in RAM. That's the address of the uh, instruction that it was up to uh, before it called the function. Otherwise, the CPU is not going to know where it's got to go back to. Uh, so when Windows runs our application, it gives us a little bit of RAM called the stack. And it's the stack that it uses to save this return address. Okay, when a subfunction is returns, uh, we no longer need its variables. That's the local variables. So they're destroyed, or they fall out of scope. Destroyed seems a bit, bit drastic, a bit dramatic. But they fall out of scope, and this is because they're also created on the stack. And we'll see the way the stack works in just a second. Uh, for instance, the main method can't see a subfunction's variables and vice versa as well. Uh, they're all gone. Uh, the local variables are created and destroyed on the stack when the function returns, so this means, quite happily for, for us as programmers, uh, that we don't have to clean them up. They're not going to consume more and more memory. Uh, yeah, unlike the heap, which we'll look at later. Okay, so we better have a bit of a look at the stack in action to see exactly the way that it works. Here I've got the main method over here on the left, and two subfunctions, just called subfunction1 and subfunction2. So these are just be two normal functions, maybe like, you know, void, calculate something, and then a bunch of parameters or whatever. And over here in yellow, I've got the stack. So this is going to start filling up from the bottom to the top, and it's actually going to pop values off in the opposite order to what they were put, uh, put on there in. Yeah, we'll see it happen anyway. Okay, so usually the CPU is just executing one line after another, and we know that it's going to start in the main method. So it'll go along, da -da 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 -da, executing the code in the main method one line after another, until it gets here. Uh, this is a function call just here, and this is a function call to subfunction 1. So it's going to do a couple of things. Before it jumps to subfunction 1, it's going to save where it was up to. So it was just about to execute line 5 of the main method, so it's going to save that to the stack. And then it's going to create subfunction 1's local variables. And it's going to put those on the stack just above that return address. OK, then it jumps, the CPU jumps straight to the code of subfunction 1 and starts executing that one line after another. Until it gets to here, which is another subfunction call. This is um, calling this function down here in blue. And once again, it's got a save to the stack where it was up to. So it was just about to execute line 3 of subfunction 1, so that's what it's going to save to the stack. It's going to put this above the other stuff on the stack. You see the stack piles up like a pile of papers, one on top of the other. Uh, function 1, line 3 is where it was up to. And then it's going to create the local variables for function 2, just here. And straight after that it's actually going to jump down to function 2 and start executing that code. Until it gets here, line 3, and it's got a return statement. So it returns, or, or sorry, when it sees return, uh, it looks at the topmost return value. So the latest return value, which is this one just here, function 1, line 3. And this is going to be the opposite order to the order that the functions were called. This is called a, a stack, or, or a LIFO data structure. Last in, first out. Uh, anyway, it's going to see this uh, function 1, line 3 and it's going to decide, well, that must have been where I came from before I called subfunction2, so that's where I'm going to jump back to. And it jumps back there. But in so doing, it also gets rid of all of the local variables and that return value from the stack. It doesn't need them anymore. It doesn't need to know where it came from uh, for subfunction2, and it doesn't need to know subfunction2's local variables either. 
So it removes them automatically from the stack and continues executing subfunction 1's code as per usual uh, until it gets down here, another return statement. So once again, it looks at the topmost return value, which is this one just here, main line 5, and it knows where it came from. So it jumps straight back down to main, also getting rid of the local variables of subfunction 2. So we see now our stack is empty again. And the important thing to notice is that it actually pushes, it's called pushing, uh, it pushes the uh, return values on the stack in a particular order and it pops them off in the opposite order. So stacks traditionally you do two operations with them, you push and you pop values. And the order that you pop values off will always be the opposite to the one that you push. And what you'll see happens is that it returns from the functions in the exact reverse order, uh, which is perfect. Really, that's exactly what we want. Anyway, then it's going to execute these last three lines of uh, main. No worries. Okay, so hopefully you've got a pretty good idea now of how local variables are created and destroyed on the stack, as well as how functions are called and how they return. Yeah, stuff just piles up on the stack and then it sort of gets popped off in the opposite order. Uh, for this tute, the main thing to see is that local variables are made and destroyed by the stack automatically. Yeah, they are. Uh, when we call and return from functions. Okay, let's introduce the heap, the mighty heap. Uh, okay, so the stack is really, really small, and if I remember at the end, we'll have a look at how you can increase and decrease it uh, for our program. Uh, but it's usually really, really small, and it's used automatically for local variables and return addresses, as we've just seen. Uh, sometimes we need more memory. Maybe we need to load a big map or a large database. Uh, sometimes also we don't want our variables to be automatically deleted when we return from a function. Maybe we want to keep variables around for a while. And uh, sometimes also we don't know when we're programming how much RAM we're going to need. Yeah, so you can't just set up local variables if you don't know how much memory you're going to need. You know, maybe every time your application runs you need a different amount. So you can't set up local variables for that. Alrighty, so the answer is the heap, basically. Uh, some of the RAM in our computer, some of the system RAM or the memory in our computer is being used by Windows and other applications, but the rest of RAM is up for grabs. And the remaining RAM, all of the system memory that's up for grabs for our program is called the heap. And it's very, very different to the stack because it's not automatic. So here I've drawn the heap in green. Uh, this gigantic big box just here represents uh, all of system memory, and the green bit is still up for grabs. Uh, maybe our program down here has its little stack in yellow, and the code just here that it's executing in yellow. And these other red boxes might just be other things that, that different applications are using. So some of the heap is already taken up by other applications, and some of the, some of the memory, I should say, is also taken up by our program. But we can request chunks of the heap. So we could just grab another chunk of the heap, no worries. Uh, we claim them for our program for as long as we need them. And they won't be deallocated automatically like the stack when we return from a function or something. Uh, they'll just stay in our program. Yeah, no other program can, can uh, manipulate the RAM that we're using from the heap uh, whilst we've laid claim to it, basically. Uh, the amounts of memory that we can allocate to from the heap are very large. Yeah, not just a megabyte or so. We can allocate gigabytes if you want. Uh, it all depends on how much RAM's in the system, of course. Okay, so the heap is limited, and all running applications, including the operating system itself, uh, have to share this system memory. So if your application takes too much of the heap, then the other applications won't operate correctly, including Windows itself, and your whole computer will probably grind to a halt and maybe crash completely. Yeah, so do be careful. Uh, okay, so the new and delete operators. These are how we allocate RAM from the heap. Uh, to create a variable on the heap, we use pointers and the new operator. To return a variable to the heap, we use the delete operator. Yeah, it's something like this. So int star i, uh, that's setting up a pointer. We're just saying that there's an integer pointer, and it's called i, uh, equals new int. And new is going to set whatever is on the left-hand side of the equal symbol. It's going to set it to be a pointer uh, to the little spot on the heap that it allocated. So right here I'm asking for a single integer from the heap. And we can set it like this. I can say star i equals 190. And we can print it out like this. Uh, it's set to star i. And all going to plan, that's going to print out 190. 
Uh, but the important thing to note is that this isn't uh, a local variable. It's actually on the heap. It's an integer grabbed from some random place in memory. And uh, yeah, it's been given to our program. Uh, it's called random access memory, incidentally, because you know you really don't know where this is going to come from. Uh, it's nothing like the old tapes that they used to use, where you'd have to rewind and fast forward to read certain bits of memory. Uh, this little I just here is uh, is going to be just a random point in the rest of the heap. You know, we're just going to get random point. Anyway, the delete operator is used to return uh, RAM that we've allocated back to the heap so that other programs can use it. And this is really, really important. Always, always, always delete RAM that you've allocated from the heap. Okay, so all of the variables that we had made up until now were actually local variables and they were created and destroyed on the stack. Or global variables and they were created and destroyed when the app starts up and shuts down. But this one, like we've just said, is very, very different. This is created and destroyed on the heap by us. It's not going to get deallocated automatically at all. Yeah, Windows might deallocate it when our program shuts down, but don't count on it. Always delete it yourself. Okay, so allocating arrays. It's, it's more usual or it's, it's useful to be able to allocate arrays, uh, not just single integers. You know, you don't often just want one integer from the heap. Maybe you want a thousand of them instead. Uh, but to allocate an array, you supply the count in square brackets. So something like this, int star i equals new int 57. Uh, the square brackets just here indicate that we're making an array. And this is going to grab some spot from the heap that's big enough to hold 57 integers. And it's going to give that to our program. It's going to return a pointer just here and set i to be that pointer. So i... Uh, will become a perfectly normal integer array with 57 elements. And it's going to be on the heap. Okay, so we could say something like i7 equals 78, or we could do i53 equals i7 plus 78. You know, do whatever you've got to do with your array. Uh, don't read all right outside the bounds of it. Do remember that you've only got from 0 to 56 as your array indices. Uh, anyway, and once you're done, uh, you should delete it. And if you're, if you're deleting an array, you always put these open and close square brackets after the delete operator, just like that. Yeah, delete, open and close square brackets, and then the name of the pointer, which was i in this example. Good stuff. I think if you do delete without those two square brackets, and it's an array that you're trying to delete, uh, it's actually only going to delete the first element. And the rest of the array will still belong to our app, and nothing else will be able to use it. So that's really selfish. Anyway, the amount to allocate can change. Yeah, this is one of the beauties of uh, the heap. Uh, the amount that we allocate can change. So we could do something like this. Uh, I've read a value, an integer called count from the user, and then I've used that in the square brackets. So if the user just here types 100, then my array is going to be 100 integers long, uh, all grabbed from the heap. Or if the user types, say, 1,000 or a million, then my array is going to have a thousand or a million integers all sitting on the heap somewhere. And we're going to get back a pointer to it in a gigantic array. All right, then you do whatever you've got to do. And once again, you delete the uh, array or, or you return it back to the uh, heap. You say that your program is no longer using it and other apps can use this RAM. Okay, so the amount to allocate is a variable. Yeah, I just said that. Ah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, memory leaks. Okay, so if you use the new operator to get some RAM from the heap uh, in a function somewhere, and you forget to use delete to return the RAM back to the heap or deallocate the RAM that you're using, uh, then every single time your function is called, your application is going to ask for more and more RAM, and it's going to creep up and up and up. And if you um, do control alt delete and open up your task manager, uh, you can see the amount of RAM your program is using just creeping up and up and up and never going back down because you're not deallocating the RAM. And this, this is called a memory leak. Uh, your computer will stop working as described. Eventually you'll use up all of the memory in your, uh, in your computer and it'll stop working. It'll crash, basically. Yeah, so be very, very careful. Always delete stuff that you've uh, gotten from the heap it's, uh, it's not deleted automatically. You don't want memory leaks, they're very bad. Okay, so finally, the new and delete are also very useful when dealing with objects, but we'll see that later. Yeah, good stuff.
Okay, so let's just have a quick look at C++. What I wanted to do was, uh, I've just got another a proje a project here open, but uh, I just wanted to show you how to increase and decrease the size of the uh, stack. If you go up to Project and you go to your Properties, uh, you'll see here in the linker in System, two settings, uh, Stack Reserve Size and Stack Commit Size. Uh, commit well, we go through reserve first. Reserve is is the total size of your stack. This is the amount of RAM that you want your program to to use up when uh, Windows first runs it for your stack. That's um, one megabyte by default, or about a million bytes. So we could do something here, like we could say, uh, I think it's bytes. So something like two two million. That'll give us about two megabytes. Two megabytes of stack space. Uh, or you could type 4 million, 5 million, it doesn't really matter however much stack space you want. Usually 1 megabyte is enough. And the commit size down here is uh, a little strange. That's actually how much of the uh, stack it's going to reserve for us at a time. So when we run our application, it doesn't actually uh, allocate the entire stack that we've requested. It just allocates a little bit at a time. So 4 kilobytes at a time down here is what it says. And uh, if you need it, if your application needs it, then it will allocate more. So it will allocate another 4 kilobytes, all the way up to 2 meg if it needs to. Uh, but if you change this to a really, really big value, then your program might load slowly. Anyway, that's how you change the uh, stack reserve and commit size. You can also change the, the heap reserve and commit size, but um, yeah, I just wanted to go through the stack. Okay, so that's about it anyway. Uh, hopefully that was useful to people, and uh, thank you for listening. See ya.